Howdy y'all, this is Los Man, and tonight's gonna be the premiere of the second season of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy the Male Girl, who we love so much. Now, there's a lot of speculation on what movies are gonna be shown, and by the time you watch this video, you'll know that one of the movies is gonna be Bloodsucking Freaks. How can we describe Bloodsucking Freaks? Well, ugh, I've got a story to tell, and it's gonna be an interesting one. Okay, back in the late or early 90s, before I even knew what the internet was, I remember buying a book, and it was a book on horror movies, just random articles on the subject of horror, you know, because I loved horror movies. And one of the articles described disturbing movies. And it was the article that inspired me to create my list of disturbing movies. And I will admit that the list that they had was pretty much the list I had, but I said to add to it because I didn't want to plagiarize and, you know, steal something and, you know, borrow something, you know, people used to do that sort of thing. Uh, but I was inspired, we'll say that, you know. And... One of the movies that was listed in there was a movie called Bloodsucking Freaks. Uh, Bloodsucking Freaks was directed by Joel Reed. It was released in 1978. Now, the movie was also called The Incredible Torture Show. And when I located a copy of the movie on VHS, probably around 95, 96, you know, I sat and watched it and, um, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. It wasn't so much disturbing in the sense of, like, Cannibal Holocaust or Sallow. The movie was very amateurish. Very, like, bargain basement looking. Which wasn't bad. I mean, that's, you know, people make early movies. You know, what's the big deal? What made the movie disturbing was the subject matter. It is a very misogynistic movie. And by today's standards, a movie like this could never be made. It's extremely anti-woman, anti-feminist. I mean, it's literally a bunch of like like a bunch of frat guys getting together and saying, "Hey, let's um torture a bunch of uh, drunk women and let's have some fun with it." Which I'm not gonna say this is how they made the movie. You know, I mean, the movie's kind of campy and it is well, silly. So we'll we'll go with that. You know, the story I'm gonna tell was just funny. I wrote a review of it. Now I had done some minor research on the film because I wanted to know more about it and um. There was an article I'd read about how the movie used resources that could have been somewhat related to maybe, you know, like the porn industry or something. And I made the mistake of not researching it or, you know, you know, following up on that story. So I just you know, wrote a review, la la la, a terrible movie, whatever. And, you know, made by people who did porn. And, uh, big mistake. Don't ever do that. Don't ever make a claim in an article or, or, or even a simple blog post, unless you know for sure. Because I got a nasty email from Joel Reed threatening to sue me, you know, for, you know, what I said, you know, because I, I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, could have been, but you know what? I didn't know. It scared me, freaked me out because I'm like, oh God, what, what did I do? Uh, you know, I didn't, you know, freaking out. So I consulted a director friend that I had, you know, he said, well, you know, just rewrite the article, take out that reference. But you know, you, you and, and you know, and then he asked me, "Did you like the movie?" I was like, "No, I thought the movie was horrible. It was, it was terrible." And, oh, and he's, so I said, "You know what? Then rewrite the review, but emphasize how you felt about the movie. You know, just you know, don't don't make reference to its production other than just how it looked." So, so I rewrote the review, and uh, yeah, basically, I'll go ahead and uh, read the review as it is. Blood sucking freaks. Now, this was written probably. I I did this around nineteen ninety six, ninety seven. Um, rewrote it probably around that time too. Okay. This film also appears on my list of disturbing movies. This movie takes place at an off-off Broadway theater with the magician Sardu performing realistic scenes of gore, Grand Guggenau style. He is, of course, a white slaver who leads a pack of sadists in a gory house of torture. Filmed as the Incredible Torture Show, it was made to be a camp classic, yet fails greatly. This movie is very misogynistic and shows little respect towards women. They're usually caged, sodomized, or used as human urinals. The movie is also filled with bad acting and not so special effects. The blood looks like it was made, or actually, sorry. The blood looked like it came from a Klingon blood bank. I mean, when you watch the movie, you'll know, you'll agree, you know, it's not, not the best, okay? Now, the scenes of torture and dismemberment look like they were done by nine-year-olds. One of the few movies that was picketed by women's groups that probably deserved it. <laughs> and let's just say, as camp goes, it's very offensive. Too offensive to be camp. 
it is one of those movies that um, makes you want your money back. And I remember, I think I paid 49 cents to watch it, so I wanted my 49 cents back, you know. Now, um, now of course, this review isn't so bad in the sense of, um, I mean, it's just, you know. Now, to be fair, the movie was made about, or at least I watched the movie about 24, 25 years ago. And you know what? My temperaments may have changed, you know. You know, I'm going to watch it again. We'll see how it goes, you know. If I still think it's this, you know, I'll, I'll say, you yeah, know, my thoughts haven't changed. Or maybe I'll find a new, you know, maybe I'll say, you know what? I can see the, the, the value in this movie. I, I believe Troma uh, distributes it. That's not for certain, no. Not for certain. I don't want uh, Lloyd Kaufman coming after me. I But it probably is the case. So we'll see. We'll see. They, they could. We'll, we'll leave it at that. And um, the real complaint I had about this movie was that I had seen something like it before. Uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis directed a movie called The Wizards of Gore, which was basically the same general idea. So maybe my real complaint with the movie is that it wasn't this, like, disturbing movie that, you know, had to be seen. That it was just a copycat of another movie that probably wasn't as good. But you know what? That's okay, because uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up was because the director, Joel Reed, passed away recently. And I don't like speaking ill of the dead, so we won't speak ill of the dead. You know, this is a cult classic and it is being featured on joe bob briggs um the last drive-in so and they're gonna have um chris jericho speaking on behalf of uh, speaking on it because he's a big fan of it so you know what we'll just leave it with that we'll watch we'll see what happens and then we'll go from there so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, close out and i'll make sure if i encounter ralphus i'll give him a good kick in the nuts you know because he probably deserves it <laughs>